and we got started with wheat germ oil. Now, I'd like to put another one in. And the reason for these, these are for we who have come into bodies that aren't quite e completely equipped uh, through malfunction of our ancestors before they've, they've left us with certain weaknesses. With many of us, we have a hydrochloric acid problem. And this hydrochloric acid may be over, it may be under. And we aren't too smart in the way of telling just how much. And sometimes we can overdo. The human body being computerized, as I mentioned before, I think we're very fortunate if we just kind of let go and let God just turn it loose and, and help it, give it the things that it needs. And for instance, the average human will take a tablespoon of honey and a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar three times a day. Take the honey and apple cider vinegar, mix it in a glass of uh, steam distilled water and drink it down. The body is so computerized that it will take the amount of the vinegar and honey that it needs and it will take it to the lower third of the stomach and there will revitalize that area so that it will start producing hydrochloric acid in the correct amount. Not too much, not too little. Now the human body will do this. We, we are so fortunate to, to have a piece of equipment, a vehicle that will handle these things and do it just the right way. This particular procedure is very simple. If we go down to the store and buy some hydrochloric acid, whether it is to the health store or to the pharmacy, it doesn't matter, and we start using this because we don't have enough hydrochloric acid, we have one little problem. After a period of time, the bottom third of the stomach says, ah, oh, nuts to them. They don't like my hydrochloric acid. They won't work with me. I just shrivel up and forget it. And atrophication sets in. And it won't work anymore. All right, we have too much acid. And so we go down and we buy some Alka-Seltzer or some uh, alkaline conditions of some kind. Well, we take the Tums or whatever we're taking and the human body gets to a point where it isn't happy because you're doing the job and not letting them supply their own. It would like cooperation and that's what we're trying to teach is the use of simple herbal aids that will feed a specific area of the body. And so your honey and your apple cider vinegar, that's your best combination. Now, if you want to break it down, and where will we get our honey? I'll tell you, every man under his own fig tree. It's far better if you can get honey from the area you live by. We oft times say a person has hay fever or asthma. Well, if you'll take comb honey and chew a, a goodly amount during the day, regularly, six days a week, week after week, uh, this condition will clear. But the small print that we have to put under there is uh, providing the honey comes from around your own neighborhood. If you have if you have this condition and you bring your honey in from Hawaii, delicious. But is it the orchid uh, that is problem that's your problem or the rare exotic plants from Hawaii that's your trouble? No, it's your vegetation in your own backyard where the honey is collected in your own backyard. And it's that close. Oh, within the state or area? Yes, you know. Um, of course, the closer we get, the better we are. If you have your own bees in your own backyard, wow, <laughs> yeah. But this this is important here, yes. Two questions. One, is it necessary to use honey with the vinegar? And the second one is, is it advisable to give the vinegar if someone has a stomach ulcer? 
to go ahead and give it even if they have the ice. Oh yes, if they chew it. If they chew the apple cider vinegar and honey as they're taking it, even the ulceration, but they should have taken the cayenne first because the cayenne will take care of that. Your vinegar must be apple cider. Now, you can get your malt vinegars and your distilled vinegars in various types, but some of them are actually more harmful and beneficial. But your apple cider, it, it carries its value right on down. The apple is one of the most powerful of all of our of our fruits is one of the most powerful of all of our foods. The apple has in it more oxygen than any other type of an herb per pound. If, if you fill this with apple cider vinegar or take it, just apple cider alone or apple juice. Apple cider and apple juice are an interchangeable Oft times the plant, if they're making apple juice and run out of labels, they put the apple cider label on and vice versa. It isn't that exacting. We, we used to call it apple cider when we'd, we'd go out with the old big old press and make it and mom would say, Sonny, would you go out and bring in a, a bucket of apple cider? Huh? All right, that was apple cider right now. So it's a little hard there to tell. but. If, if that were filled with apple juice and you dropped into it the culture of the most dangerous known disease germs to mankind, it would be a live, healthy culture, but by the time it would sink to the bottom, it would be dead. This has so much oxygen in the apple cider or apple juice that the culture can't live in it. It's too powerful for it. And that's what we're trying to do is build bar powerful bodies by furnishing the right materials. Another thing about this apple juice or apple cider, it, uh, it, it's very potent if you have bad water. Now, supposing you have some low-grade water and it's loaded with germs, you can put a little apple juice in the bottom of the glass and then fill the glass and it will act just like, uh, well, it'll kill the germs. Make them so they're uh, not anxious to stick around. This is an old, old expression that we oftentimes wonder about. The first of the great miracles that Jesus ever performed was turning water into wine. And in the back of our minds, we oftentimes question, why? <laughs> why? Well, it, it was an essential thing. Oxygen is needed. It is one of our most needed uh, essences or materials on Earth is oxygen. And we get a lot of it from the waters we drink. A lot of it comes from the, the liquids, but when we are in an area where water is contaminated and it's dangerous to drink as it was back where Jesus was teaching, people who couldn't afford wine, couldn't afford juices, were forced to drink the water or dehydrate. And what was taught, a little wine is good for the belly. Now that doesn't mean a gallon at a throw. It means a little. And they could take and put a little wine or juice in the bottom of the glass and fill it up and they would get their oxygen from the liquid without getting the contamination. So here was the key and this was why that the wine or juice was so badly needed at that time. If you're traveling in areas where you're dubious about the water, uh, such as uh, Mexico, um, Salt Lake, I mean, um, mm -hmm. various places, if, if you wish to mix a little juice with it, you're far better off, pure juice. 
This, um, and while we're right on the subject, uh, this is distilled water I'm drinking so that there won't be any problems. Yes. Is it uh, uh, detrimental to your um, pancreas and so forth if you drink apple juice straight or must you dilute it 50 50? The pancreas will say, oh, brother, it's about time you did something about it. It's one of the best foods in the world. You dilute it or must you? No, you don't dilute it. You chew it. This, this is the key to all of our taking of juice. Now in our three-day cleanse, before we start on the mucusless diet, we recommend apple as our number one juice. But for a person with pancreatic malfunction or spleen trouble, every mouthful should be chewed. This is the old adage of Drink your solids and chew your liquids. If we do this, the saliva will neutralize the, uh, the juice so that it is the same pH factor as we need for assimilation. So many times we inhale our food, just gulp it down, and no saliva gets mixed with it. We get 7 to 8% assimilation. If we can chew that juice, chew that juice, or whatever we're taking down, we get 40 to 45 percent assimilation. More so, of course, with the liquids than, than we will with the solids. But there's that much difference. Until the saliva is mixed with the food particles itself, the food particles will go right on through without being assimilated completely. And it takes the saliva to turn the key for the digestive juices to flow. She's really anxious to do the right thing with the distilled water. And she adds minerals after she distills it. I feel sorry for her because she has missed the boat. This is just what we're using the distilled water for is to get rid of the <laughs> minerals. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've got, we've got two types of minerals, organic and inorganic, live and dead. Your water supply today in all cities has one big problem, as it does in the country. Whether it's spring water, well water, artesian, or coming from the city pipeline, it is hard. It is very seldom you'll ever find a zero soft water. Most all of your water is hard, but it is a dead inorganic mineral that's in that water that cannot be assimilated by vegetation. It cannot be assimilated by human beings. And this hard water is what forms kidney stones, uh, gall stones, neuritis, bursitis, rheumatism, arthritis, glaucoma, cataracts, so forth and so on, because it is that which cannot be assimilated. Yes, we have one here. Uh, how many weeks was this? Uh, that's about, uh, 15 or 20 gallon. This isn't fit for man or beast. <laughs> this was distilled, and this is what came out of it. All water isn't that bad. Some of us were. I mean, uh, <laughs> this condition of water that is loaded with mineral. People say, well, I need that mineral. I need to drink from that deep well, or I, I need to drink from that hard water because I need those minerals. They need those minerals like another hole in the head because those are minerals that cannot be assimilated. They are accepted into the body. They are accepted, but not assimilated, and consequently they lie in heavy deposits and cause side effects and after effects. And those are those things I just mentioned. Kidney stones, gall stones, and so forth. Never will plant life be used successfully until it has absorbed water itself. But it has a different ability than the human body does. In Psalms 104, 14, 
we have the answer, and I looked for it for years. And when I found it, I was very, very happy because it gave us the answer why the inorganic and the organic mineral and their use. It says, the Lord speaking, and I do give you grass for the cattle to eat. But this next is terrific. And the herb for the service of man that he may bring forth out of the earth food. And that's the answer. All right. We have a mother. Mama is the one who begat us, but Mother Earth is the one that made us. We are from Mother Earth. And if you don't believe that, from dust thou art, <laughs> and to dust shalt thou return. And I'm hoping that after these sessions that we'll put better dust back into the earth than we're walking around with right now. <laughs> this, this particular thing of dust in the Mother Earth, in Mother Earth is every food that's needed for mankind. It has all of 70 basic and the 70 trace minerals. It's loaded with them. And it's there for us to use. But if we take a shovel full of dirt out of our garden that's well taken care of, we use an Osmer separator and separate each of the minerals by themselves and then make them pharmaceutically fine and put them into capsules or tablets. We've got the minerals, all 17 basic and 70 trace minerals. They're there. And we can accept them all into our body. We can accept every one of them. But we won't assimilate much of it. It lies there as dead deposits. Inorganic minerals that cannot be assimilated. It has to go. Every bit of this has to go through plant life. And that's why the Lord, number one, in Genesis tells us what we use for food, which is the seed-bearing herbs. And then he tells us in Psalms 104.14 that the herb is to take food out of the earth. What happens? The seeds are in the earth. They go in and like an osmer separator, they pull from the dust of the earth the minerals out. And by osmosis, osmosis, they change the dead inorganic mineral to live vibrating organic minerals that can be assimilated, where before they could only be accepted. All right, in your tap water, you've got that mineral which can be accepted into the body, but it cannot be assimilated. So we get the water distilled. Wonderful. And we turn around and we put the same crazy minerals back in again that we can accept but can't assimilate. We're going north to go south. No, it, it just doesn't work. Where do we get our minerals? From fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds. They're there. They're there in abundance. And an ample amount. So there's nothing to worry about. So back me up. There is one of the great drinks of all times. Nectar of the gods, ambrosia, honeydew, moonbeams. In other words, it quenches the thirst. <laughs> I'll have to tell you quickly why I finally came around to drinking distilled water. For years, I didn't know what distilled water was. I had no idea. I hadn't done any research on it. But I had been crippled for so long. At this particular time, I had been in the wheelchair for about nine months. And the pain was excruciatingly bad. My, uh, my legs, my, uh, gee, thanks. Not bad. Thank you, that was worth the entrance. Got to see what we, cut out the drooling. <laughs> I don't know whether this carpet, carpet can take it. I, I had been, suffering so bad that finally one night the pain conked me out. I mean, I, I blanked out. I, I was lying there in bed and, and I just couldn't take any more. And I had a dream. And this dream was specifically for me. It showed over on this side 
was the most beautiful garden I'd ever seen, an orchard. And it was lush, absolutely looked like the Garden of Eden. And immediately it stopped, and here was desert. And there was a stone uh, culvert going across here. And over on this side was a rock mountain. And out of the rock mountain came the most beautiful stream of water, a spring just sparkling. It came out and it bounced down over the rocks in this falls, went into the culvert, went across, and watered the garden. And in my dream I said, oh, it's the water that makes the beautiful garden. And a voice said, or the spirit or something, and it is the water that makes this. And that quickly I was taken to a hospital room and I was in front of a hospital bed where a man by osmos or ossification had been turned to stone. And as he laid there, only his eyes would move back and forth. And he looked up at me and he pleaded with me. I could tell with those eyes he was pleading for me to do something. But he was stone. Now, since that time, I have seen several of them in circuses. People who have turned to stone. And it's a frightening thing. It is. Well, here, here was the case. I, I, I knew it had something to do with me. And I woke my wife up. And, and I told her the story. And she said, well, honey, it's trying to tell you that you're supposed to drink certain type of liquid for your arthritis. And I said, yeah, yeah, but I can't quite make it out. She, I tell you, it's kind of thick up here sometimes. It takes a while to get it through. So we went back to sleep. And the next day I was pretty serious about it because I, I was suffering so. And I knew a man. I swapped some materials I had for a water softener. And a very expensive water softener. So he puts the water softener in. And I gave him my merchandise. And everybody was happy. And I started drinking soft water like it was going out of style. And I got worse. <laughs> I mean, I quit drinking it. It got me so bad. Now, it was soft water, zero soft. But all it was was an ion exchange. That was all. Well, I got back to suffering again. And, and a few months went by. And a young fellow came by me. I was sitting in a wheelchair. And he tossed a book into my lap. The name of the book is The Choice is Clear by Dr. Pen Benick. Benick. Dr. Benick, yes. The Choice is Clear. And as I sat, I just ate it up. I mean, boy, that just, it hit, well, I, I knew this was it. And uh, he told about th the stilled water and the difference between that and spring water and one thing and another. So I called up, got some distilled water coming into me. And in three weeks, I was back on a lecture platform again. Yes, and I carry distilled water with me always. And the people who sponsor me on my 100-odd lectures a year, they know that I will not even appear for a lecture unless they've got steam distilled water for me. My minerals come from fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and seeds. But this is the reason. Now, let's reverse the whole picture. Generation after generation, inorganic minerals have accumulated and been passed on down. And finally, we get people who have hardening of the arteries very early in life. Arteriosclerosis is a sad thing. The condition was passed on down, and because the condition was not altered, it gets worse as we go along. This condition here is one wherein we've got to change it. We've got to, as time comes along, switch. But now our bodies are loaded with dead inorganic minerals. In reading the iris of the eye, we can look in and we can see a deposit of iron here, a deposit of sodium here. We can see some uh, magnesium and aluminum in various parts of the body. That has to be reversed. And so by drinking steam distilled water, you take it into the body 
and it will reverse the whole picture. The program is this. Snows and rains fall up here in the mountains, and they melt and run down the valleys, into the valleys. Our rocks and our heavy uh, mineralization is up here. Down in the valleys, over the years, we've mined it out. We farmed out all the minerals. And so nature reverses now and brings the minerals down and loads the valleys with dead inorganic mineral for the plants to absorb and keep us healthy. This water, as it comes down, it's zero soft when it hits the top of the mountain, snow or rain. And the farther it travels, the longer it progresses along, the harder it gets. And down until when it hits the dam in Salt Lake, it's about 18 grains hard. And by the time it gets out to Magna, it's 27 grains hard. Well, anything past zero soft isn't fit for man or beast. This is why we wonder, well, why not have, why didn't the Lord put distillers in us or something? Or what, what's the key? Well, he just put a brain in us, and the brain says, I think I would rather have rainwater or snow water or soft water. Because all we have to do is go back and look at the dinosaurs. Right here in Utah, we, we have a large museum. And you will find that there are immense stone deposits in the dinosaur's tail and in his spine area where he has accumulated inorganic minerals from water because that's what they drank. So this is why the steam distilled water, because it will reverse. It will start now doing what we're afraid it's going to do in the first place, leach out the minerals. Well, glory be, that's just what it's going to do. It's going to leach them out. But it's going to leach out the dead inorganic minerals. And it will never, under any condition, ever touch a live mineral that can be assimilated. We've got nothing to fear about. Any minerals that can be assimilated into the human body will be assimilated. Those that cannot be assimilated and only accepted in the deposits will be taken into solution and leached out with your steam distilled water. So that's why we should use no less than a gallon a day for an average adult. One ounce to the pound of body weight. A 20 pound child would have 20 ounces of steam distilled water. A person that has gone a little over the 135 pounds. Uh, Two set. Well, anyhow, <laughs> you figure that one out. <laughs> so, you, you've got the answer here. Don't add minerals, please. Unless you are adding an organic mineral, and there are so few of those. In your diatomaceous earth, uh, Mount Merle night or something wherein it is vegetation from uh, seawater that has been accumulated. Something of this type, that's alive, like your, uh, like your total M or your azomite.